Hello everyone, it's Farkad here, and in this video I'm going to cover update 12 and all the special things it comes with, which is quite a lot. Probably should re-record that. This update is pretty epic. They're really pumping out content for the game now. Now there's no real spoilish ones in this one, so I'm just meshing it all together, and you'll understand why, because it's just too hard to explain otherwise. Unfortunately, I don't know where to start with this because there's a new cave. The new solophyte material can be mined with the new pickaxe, which can be used to make a forge that can upgrade your weapons. So like, where do you start? Start with a cave. There is a new cave in the game. I think it's called Cave F. It's over near where the golf course is. And there's two entrances. The one closest to the coast, you've got to avoid. It's a dead end. Go to the other one, the one where it just sinks down, kind of like the way the forest was. Now, this cave doesn't have any enemies in it yet which is a good thing. So it's actually a safe cave to explore. However, you do need the rebreather, which you have to go to cave A for, which is near the beach spawn. So make sure you bring that with you and maybe a torch. I don't know. So in this cave, there is a lot of gore props, a lot of skeletons, a lot of crosses, and there's three items to look out for. There's a pickaxe, a schematic for a new buildable item, just like the forest, and a new question mark item, which is relevant to update 11's question mark item. Now the question mark item is just an artifact. It's part of one that's probably going to be built with the other thing. It's building to a story item. I don't know what it is. It's probably artifact two from the forest, which you could switch to red, which would attract enemies or blue, which would be peaceful, push enemies away. Though I don't think and not that predictable, they'll probably do something a little bit more with it. Just have to wait and see. It's found down at the bottom of the cave in its special own little section. The next thing you'll probably find down here is a new schematic, and that is for what I'm calling the forge. I spoke to Tony Macaroni, he found it. It is actually called item plating, but it's more of a forge than anything. Now, this item cannot be added with console commands yet unless someone else has found it. However, you can use a go-to command, which Tony Macaroni found. I've put it in the description if you want to know about it. It will teleport you straight there, providing you type in cheat stick in the game. Just type it in cheat stick and then press F1, and then type in that command. It will take you straight there. Also in the same cave, you'll find the pickaxe, which you use to mine the solophyte, which you then use in the forge to make the weapon upgrades. So I'm sorry if this is confusing, but I have to kind of piece this together in a way that kind of makes sense, but they all bounce off each other. You get what I mean. So solophyte, you already know what it looks like it's throughout the caves. I don't know if it respawns, but when you hit it, you mine it. You can hold 12 pieces at a time. Each time you need to upgrade, it requires six pieces. And most of the weapons in the game can be upgraded. The only thing I found that couldn't be upgraded was the knife, the bow, the crossbow, the compound bow, and probably something else. But things like the guitar, the machete, the modern axe, fireman's axe, even guns, shotgun, pistols, the revolver, everything can be upgraded. How am I going to piece this together with my time bar in the video? I don't know. With that schematic, you can access it in the survival guide thing. It's right at the end. It requires four batteries and three turtle shells. Also, you can now carry three turtle shells at a time. If you can find three turtle shells, if you're playing hard survival, you're going to have a fun time trying to find these things. They don't spawn very often. It's self-powered. You don't need to add solar panels or other batteries. It does it all itself. Now, keep in mind, once you activate this thing, so you put the six solarite in it and the weapon and start it, a wave of mutants will attack about six or seven cave mutants. A fingers, a twins, and maybe something else, I'm not sure. Depending if you finish the game, if Armsy or Virginia might show up. It's probably not ideal you build this in your base because you'll get hit by this wave unless you are well defended because it spawns this wave and they come running at you straight away. I found out that if you build it on this little island that most of you are probably well aware of, when it's not winter, so they can't walk across the lake when it's frozen, they can't get to you. So this is an option if you want a peaceful thing. Once it's upgraded, your weapon will do about 50 to 100% more damage. I can't figure out the math. I'll have the numbers on the screen, and I am just not having a great day today. So I'm just going to put these numbers in. The before one is with the upgrade, and after is with not the upgrade, if that makes sense. I just cannot figure out how much extra damage it's doing. It's quite a lot, though. So this will add some late game potential. I don't know if the solar fight respawns. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. If it does, at night will stop it eventually because they don't want you just going to the same cave, the easy spot to get solar fight. You're going to have to go throughout the whole map picking this stuff up. Now, this was actually on my wish list before the game came out. I had three videos, and I think it was in the third video that I put this. I was very hesitant about it because they had to do it properly. Otherwise, it could end up bad. But I think they have done it properly. I've been talking about this material being mineable for a while. I don't know if they take my advice. I've got no idea if this has been in the works. It also coats the weapons in a material, the effect. It actually looks quite cool. It's like a mix between bronze and gold. 
Some weapons look better than others. I noticed that the crafted club looks quite spicy. With the skull, it looks quite good. I think that's all I got to cover on this. Sorry if this was so disjointed. And there was two buildable items at it. The second one was quite difficult to find, but it's actually at the bottom of Cave A in that new section they built where there's no enemies down. And all it is is a cross or a crucifix that you build, and it's just got a lot of lights on it. Unfortunately, it doesn't stay lit for a very good distance. It de-renders very quickly as you get further away from it, so you can't use it as a lighthouse or anything like that. But it does look cool, though. Now, they've added some new animations for Virginia and Kelvin, and there's quite a lot of them. I haven't had the time to go through them, but the Sons of the Forest channel, he went through and did them all. So I'm just going to link his video and show you a snapshot of what has changed. You can actually torture Kelvin, and Virginia will actually copy you and torturing him and laughing. I really didn't like that, so if you want to find that out for yourself, go ahead. You can nod at Kelvin, and he will nod back. She also laughed when a animal gets launched into the air by the spring trap, which is quite entertaining, I guess. There's quite a few. I recommend going to check out the video. If someone's already done it better than what I could, you might as well go look at it. The next change is that Calvin will now build blueprints and finish them all, not just one. He'll go through and finish every one that is in the area, which is really good. I actually thought he already did this. Goes to show how much I actually use Calvin for what he's good for, which can be limited considering how much he gets caught on objects. The next change is actually the change that I thought was the best change in this update. And it's not even that cool. But you can now stand on ramps without sliding down. And you can even place the logs or the planks without sliding down either. And it even extends to one and a quarter length ramps. You slide a little bit, but you can tell they've made a good fix on this one. This is in like my top five annoying features of the game that it's like a feature or a bug that reminds you that you play in a game you break immersion. Those bugs are the worst. Another example of that bug is when you're cutting up things or things disappear and fall under the earth. That's another one, which still hasn't been fixed. Also another bug that has not been fixed yet, and I don't really know why they should really fix this, but if you press escape while in game to pause it, you think your computer would use less resources. No, it just goes off the chain. My GPU usage goes to max and the fans warm up. It goes havoc. They really need to fix this one. It's like when you press escape, the frame rate just goes unlimited and the computer thinks we've got to use every resource possible to capture the still image that's on the screen right now. If you're walking away from the game, don't even pause it. It's just not worth it. Save and just leave. It's just too much. The next change is that they've added a sensitivity for aiming. When you're aiming with anything, it slows down how much the movement of the mouse goes. I'm not familiar with this. I've never seen it in a game. I don't play many first person shooters. I'm assuming it does for a lot of newer ones. So I've got no idea. But it's recommended that you slow it down because it does help a bit, especially if you're trying to get those headshots. The next change is another one that I've been wanting to fix for ages. It's not really an immersion breaking one, just an annoying one that as a video editor you will notice. And that's when you're skinning anything, like a animal or a mutant for armor or whatever. The sound and the stabbing animation's out of sync. Well, not anymore, they fixed it. And I'm very thankful for this because when I was editing, it was kind of a main thing that I'd include. And yeah, it was always out of sync. It's just a good little change. The next one is that they fix sprinklers, so they now put the player out and they'll wash blood off the player. So if you set yourself on fire or babies or any enemies, the sprinklers are going to do their job. They work quite well, so even if you walk into the fire, you won't catch on fire. Well done. Next thing is that light bulb's render distance is supposed to be fixed. As mentioned with the cross, it hasn't really been fixed. You won't even be that far away and they don't render in. I don't know why it's like that. The next change is a weird one, but it's just something I really noticed every time I went to the beach, but they fixed driftwood floating. So now it doesn't glitch out as much as it used to. It used to be really bad and it was very noticeable. Maybe that was one of those immersion breaking things. That's why I'm mentioning it. It's not essential though. Next one is you can hit animal heads with a golf butter. Yep, that is it. Hard hitting stuff. And lastly is that the pistol or firearms now do less damage towards mutants and mutants have got a health boost. I don't think all of them have, just some. I'm just trying to figure out which one's which. I think Fingers had 150 health, he's now got 180. Twins had 200, he's now got 220. And the amount of damage you do with projectiles has been dropped by about 10%. So yeah, it's a thing. And here's the rest of the patch notes while I just mentioned a few that I thought were important that I couldn't get footage for or the footage just would have been too difficult to get. The first one is that they fixed bullets fired from ultra close range, sometimes going through the enemy. You probably see this like when a fingers charges you and you're trying to shoot them and your bullets are going through them. Yeah, 
They made some optimizations to characters and AI update, as they call it. I don't know what this meant, but I'm assuming it's good. Hopefully Calvin doesn't get stuck on so much stuff. They fixed Frank sometimes trying to do a revenge attack on himself after lighting himself on fire. <laughs> That's a funny one. The spear melee stab damage is being reduced from 15 to 10. That's like a 50% reduction in damage, I think, is it? Was it 33%? I'm not sure. I'm not really good with math, but that's quite big. I think they were meaning to nerf the spear a long time ago because it is quite powerful. But where its biggest weakness was is that it used a lot of stamina. I don't think it needed to be nerfed, but oh well. Maybe they should make a better variant like they did in the forest. Next one is that player can no longer be killed during cutscenes. That's good to know. Puffies when high health won't get dismembered. This is something I've noticed when you're in caves, you, you could just hit them a couple of times and you cut their arm off or something and they'll die. It made them very easy to kill. Way too easy. Next one is that they add a two second hit react cooldown to lower stun lock on puffies. This is a good one. I felt that puffies are too weak and the blue puffies are too strong. So I think they're just trying to close the gap a bit, which is good. Next one is that fingers and twins now have more aggressive behavior. This is good. Usually they're quite docile. Either the fingers is really docile or just full on charging at you. There's never an in-between with them. The next one is that they reduce max late game outside creepy count by 20%. As someone who's up to day 140 something, yeah, this is a probably a good idea. This can be quite out of control, especially in certain areas like near the beach and the starter location. It's crazy. You just go there just to farm mutant army. You can get 20 pieces real easy. They reduce the likelihood that creepies taking over populated villages. This is a good one. In my save, almost every village I go to, even flying around testing things and that, has been attacked by creepies and the creepies are smashing them. If I went to every village, all the cannibals would be wiped out by now. And lastly, the cannibal leaders or village guards, once alerted to a player, can now call for quick backup from others in the area. I wasn't able to test this in my playthrough because, as I mentioned, they're all getting smashed by the mutants, by the puffies and such. Yeah. So overall, this is probably one of the better updates. This is a real spicy one. I'm very impressed with it. This is only after two weeks. The next one comes out in three weeks, which would be the first update, aside from when I was in Norway, where I won't have my daughter to look after while I'm making the video. Because I tell you what, making these videos in a day while looking after kids, not easy. But she's great though, able to keep herself entertained. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.